Hey there, Japan here, and I am back with another video. In this video, I'm going to go through how to actually add hitbox interactions so that when you spawn the hitbox and it collides with the opponent, the opponent will be launched at a certain distance, they will accumulate some damage, and then they will be launched at a certain angle. And so, with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the series, and join the Patreon where there's access to the scripts and files of the video as well as access to the discord server where I talk to my community and we walk through problems and discuss different video ideas that they want. So without further ado, I'll see you in the video. Alright, so before we do anything, we're going to first start working on our Fox script. So once we dive into our Fox script, you want to go near the top, maybe near where the global variables are and add in some space for these new variables which are going to be the attributes so these attributes are going to be your current percentage the stocks you have and the weight of your character then from here the next thing you want to add is the next set of variables which is going to be the knockback variables so these are going to relate to how we're going to attack our opponent and have our opponent you know be able to be knocked back or hit or fly from the collision from here the next thing we're going to do is go to our hitbox scene which is over here and from our last video we didn't actually implement this function the hitbox <clears throat> the hitbox collide function that allows it so that our player character can cause the opponent to fly when they're hit so now we're going to implement that code which should look something like this it should say hitbox underscore collide and then we're going to put body in the brackets and then all of this code now as you can see there's a few errors because we haven't established a few things but there's something that i have to make very clear about this function this shouldn't make sense for now but what this function does is it allows our hitbox when it collides with the opponent to carry out all of this code so that by the end of this code our opponent is now flying our opponent is now being knocked back and i'm going to break this down in a bit but before i break it down i need to show you a few more functions that allow this function to operate so as you can see here when you look at this hitbox collide function and you go down line by line by line by line the first function that has no existence so far is this knockback function so that's the first function i'm going to implement for you to see here so if you go to the very bottom and I make a space, this is going to be the knockback function. There's also going to be these variables and I'll explain what this means in a sec. So you can write this all out. So the way this knockback function is going to work is by, first of all, checking for certain parameters. These parameters are going to be percentage, damage, weight, knockback scaling, base knockback and the ratio and we don't necessarily have to create these variables we can just use these letters but i create these variables so that it is clearer to me when i am reading this function what everything means so you technically don't need to have this actually i think you might do for the weight and stuff like that now for this return what does this mean for me to figure out how the knockback formula works in smash bros i had to go into the smash bros wiki page and figure out what formula they use to calculate how strong a knockback is going to be and so this is the knockback formula translated into code over here the only difference between the smash bros knockback formula in smash ultimate than the one that's in uh, my own game is that i have to times the result of the knockback by around 0.04 which should be 0.4 percent so the knockback in this game is 0.4 percent of that of what is in smash ultimate because our units are different but if you want to you can use the smash 64 version of knockback you can use rivals or aether you can use smash melee or smash 4 if you want to i decided to go for smash ultimate so that's what this means from here now i'm going to show you what this s angle function is meant to represent so next up here is our s angle our S angle here with the S represents the Sakurai angle. 
The Sakurai angle is a phenomenon that occurs in Smash Bros games. You actually don't need to have this. You can ignore this if you don't want to have Sakurai angles in your game. But Sakurai angles are specific angles where if the angle is equal to 361 or, or, or minus 181, then the angle that the player is going to be launched at will be different depending on how large the knockback value is and whether or not the opponent is in the air. This is just something that I was nerding out about when I was figuring out how to get knockback and angles to work when I was programming the game initially. So you don't need to have this, you can ignore this if you don't want it. But yeah, this is what the S angle represents. It represents the Sakurai angle. So now, as for the next function, being the angle flipper with the body being the attribute or variable that you're going to put inside this function, let's go all the way to the bottom and copy this code. It's very large, quite large as you can see. So this is the top of it, up until the fourth. And then from four to seven. Now, before you panic and you're like, damn, this is a lot of code to copy out. I want to make it very clear that you don't actually have to have all of this written out. If you don't want to have angle flippers in your game, you can just do this first one. So only have it so that there is only zero, the value of zero for angle flippers. But what this code is meant to represent is the different ways that a hitbox can collide with the opponent and send the opponents launching at a different angle. This whole function is meant to determine which velo which angle the opponent will launch at and how the opponent is going to slow down as they are launched in that angle. So if you look down here in the comments, I say that the value of zero for angle flipper is to send at the exact knockback angle every time. The value of one sends away from the center of the enemy player. Um, number two sends towards the center of the enemy player. So there are some uh, hitboxes in Smash Bros. Smash Bros where the opponent will always be launched back away from the opponent's center. So imagine you have a fox and you have a wolf and the fox hits the wolf. The wolf will always be sent away from the center of that fox opponent, if that makes sense. And so these are all the different ways that you can launch an opponent so if you don't want to have the different angle flippers just have zero and then that should be fine but if you want to have all of them then these are all of the angle flippers that you can do and on top of that you may notice that there are some very there are some functions here that we haven't written out so i'm going to show you what the code is for these functions so as for these functions such as get horizontal velocity and get horizontal decay you want to write out these functions as well as this constant that I have over here. So these are the functions you want to write out. Now I can explain what each of these mean. For the get horizontal decay, this function is the rate at which the opponent will slow down after being knocked back. This is the horizontal decay, this is the vertical decay. And so you have an initial value of 0.051 and this is the value of the decay. But because this is horizontal decay, you want to find out how much on the horizontal axis, the x-axis, the player character will be slowing down. And the way we do that is with the cost uh, function. So we use the cost function, which is just a bit of maths. So we get the angle and we convert it into radians from degrees. And then from there, we round the number by timesing it by 1000, rounding it, then dividing it by uh, not 1000, 10,000. Then you want to make it a whole number, so then you times it by 1000. So let's say it was 0 0.051 is the value that we got. If you times that by 1000, you get 51. So on the x-axis, the once the character has been launched, they'll be slowed down by 51 units every frame, so that the character does not continue to be launched indefinitely. The same thing is done with the vertical decay. Now. The get horizontal velocity is the same as get vertical velocity, but obviously it's dealing with the x-axis and it's pretty much something similar to the decay, but this is actually how far the player character is going to be launched in the horizontal axis. With that being combined with the vertical, then you get, you know, launch angles and such. But what this is doing is, is getting the horizontal knockback speed with the total knockback and the angle. I could explain the maths behind this, but 
you're already given the total knockback and now you want to convert this total knockback into a horizontal knockback so you could imagine a triangle i'm not sure if you were there in secondary school doing this maths but basically this is just me doing pythagoras <laughs> with code to get the value of the horizontal uh, velocity when being launched and it's the same thing with the vertical so from here now i can move on to this get hit stun function up here so now as for the get hit stun function we're going to get the knockback value and divide it by 0 0.03 aka times it by 1.7 i think but yeah i'm dividing this by 0 0.03 so i want to make the knockback value larger than it actually is and then what i'm going to do is go down here or maybe under here and you want to uh, copy down this code it's quite short get hits done with the variable here being uh, knockback and you can either have this return value or this return value the way hits done works is by determining how long is the character going to be in hits done for before they are put back into tumble or into the air state so the smaller the value you have the quicker the opponent is able to get out of hit stun the larger the value you have the more the opponent is in hit stun so i can show you the difference between these two there might be an annotation to show you the difference between 0 0.4 and 0 0.533 but 0 0.4 makes it so that the opponent comes out of hit stun quicker than 0 0.53 uh 0 0.533 so you can choose which one you want out of these two values and so from here, the next thing you want to do is move to the Fox character. And from the Fox character, we're now going to add in the hit stun state. So what we can do is scroll all the way to the top and add in a new state. I'm going to add it uh, after the ledge stuff, but before the attacks. And I'm going to add a state called hit stun. All right, so you want to add a new state and call it hit stun. So now scrolling down, you want to go to after the rolling or wherever you want to put it and add in this code for the hit stun state so here's the code and in this code is quite simple it's just saying that if your knockback is more than a certain amount of knockback then you have the ability to bounce off surfaces and so if let's say you hit the ground like a spike attack for example you're going to bounce off the ground and go into the air and so if you do bounce off your velocity will be 0.8 or 80 percent of what it was previously then from there your velocity is going to slow down at the rate of v decay and h decay if you remember from the hitbox the h decay and v decay being the rate at which the player will slow down once they have been launched and the way we end the uh, hit stun scene the hit stun state is by getting the parent's frame counter to be equal to hit stun. So let's say the hit stun frame number is around, let's say, uh, 10 frames. Once the frame has reached 10, the player character is no longer going to be in hit stun. They're going to go into their air state. In future videos, we're going to change this air state into a tumble state where the character will be tumbling. But for now, we're just going to have both of these states be air. If you don't want to have to copy out all of this code, then go into the Patreon down below. So that you can get access to the code of the latest video and so aside from that the next thing we need to do is now add in the animation and the state text label so what i'm going to do is go under the ledge roll copy this and then change it to hit stun there you go and so from here, the next thing you want to do is scroll all the way up here and where it says export var ID equals one, you actually want to change this to say on ready var ID equals parent dot ID. And so what you have to now do from here is to go into the Fox uh, script and paste this line of code, which is export var ID int. So what this does is it confirms which player is currently playing as our player character. For example, if the ID was 1, it would be player 1. If the ID is 2, it would be player 2 and so on and so on. And so what this ID does is, let's say the, the ID here is 1. In the state machine, the ID would also be 1 because it's the ID of the parent. And so for any input that you do, for example, if you do jump, right? Where it says percentage S, 
over here you know and then it says percentage id what this is saying is if it's jump one then you will be able to jump and so what we have over here is that we have our input ids as you can see shield one jump one attack one right one but i've also now added in right two up two etc etc so you want to add in these input these input uh actions over here right to left to up to down to shield to jump to attack to special to you want to add those things that's what you want to add so that you can differentiate between player one player two player three player four if you want to have up to four player characters then you'd have to do attack four uh down underscore four etc etc actually one more thing i have to do before the very last thing that we have to do is for us to go back into the hitbox script and where it says area entered for you guys it should say area entered like that change that to body entered so instead of area entered it should say body entered like such and apart from that that's it and so from here the last thing that you need to do is go to the 2d scene click on the fox, fox character and change the layer mask so that for the fox character instead of the mask being on one it's on two and three like so from here the next thing to do would be to click on the test stage then add the fox character duplicate the fox character and change the id from zero to one and then for the other fox character from zero to two then maybe separate the two fox characters and then play the game and as you can see when i attack my opponent they are launched and as you can see the launch distance is increasing and there's also this attack everything is working as usual everything seems to be working and so that's it for this video in the next video i'm going to be working on adding hit freeze or the tumble state depending on what you guys want i know you guys have enjoyed the series so give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and if you need any sort of help or one-on-one -on -one support or you want to meet a community of people trying to help each other out with this uh, series, join the Patreon. And uh, I'll see you there. So without further ado, I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.